Hi, I'm Pastor Brian Hammond, and you are watching Grace Revelation on Preach the Word Worldwide Network. If you are a believer who believe that you can lose fellowship with the Father God when you sin, and you feel that you need to confess your sin to God in order to receive forgiveness from God, in order to become righteous again, because you believe that you, when you sin, your fellowship with God is broken, but your relationship is still intact. Most importantly, you believe that your righteousness is conditional, meaning when you sin, you are unrighteous, and God is mad at you, and you are under the curse. So in order to stop God from being angry with you and to stop from living in the realm of the curse, you must confess those sins to get back in fellowship with God and to become righteous again. That's what you believe. You believe that you are unrighteous when you sin and you have to confess your sins in order to become righteous again. That's what's under the law. That was conditional. The Mosaic law was conditional. Under the covenant grace, it's unconditional. Now, also... This message is called the, the Righteousness of God, Part 1 of a four-part series. The Righteousness of God, Part 1 of a four-part series. Now, before I give you my scripture text, I want to say this. Both the words relationship and fellowship share the same Greek word. Let me say that again. Both words, the fellowship and relationship, share the same Greek word root word. Koinonia, K-O-I-N-A-N-I-A, K-O-I-N-A-N-I-A. Both fellowship and relationship share that same Greek root word. Now, and it means that even if you fail, your relationship and fellowship with God are not broken because your sins, right, and your failures was paid at the cross. So a lot of people, a lot of Christians believe that when they sin, right, their fellowship is broken, but their relationship is still intact. I'm here to tell you that's a conditional a mindset that was produced under the Mosaic law. Now, koinonia, the relationship and fellowship, both of those words share the same Greek root word, which is koinonia. I'm here to tell you, under the covenant of grace, uh, when you sin, your sin is not charged to your account. We went over that. Uh, what I mean by that is in, in Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 8, it says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Uh, that, that word impute is an accounting term. It means charge sin. You remember we discussed uh, in forgiveness of sins, right? We discussed that the, the, when Abraham walked the earth, Right? People were sinning. The Bible said, but sin was not charged to their account because the law was not yet given. So in, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, for uh, the law is not for the righteous. So a lot of people believe that when they sin, it's charged to their account. God is mad at them, and they must confess their sins in order to be uh, to get back in relationship with the God, with the Father God. And also uh, now they can continue to live like they lived uh, before they sinned. Now, remember, koinonia, relationship and fellowship, koinonia, that same Greek word, meaning under the covenant of grace, when you sin, uh, sin is not charged to your account because the law is not for the righteous. So when Jesus died on the cross, he ended the law, telos, T-E-L-O-S. He terminated the law. He fulfilled the law. Now, so, now, my scripture text for this series uh, the righteousness of God is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. This is my scriptural text for this series, The uh, Righteousness of God. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For he had made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sent for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, the Father God put all the sins of our lifetime in the body of Jesus, right? And made Jesus to die for us as our sacrifice and our substitute. Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. Jesus was our substitute and our sacrifice. 
on the cross as the Lamb of God. He took away our sins or he died as our substitute for our sins. So when we confess him as Savior, we receive forgiveness of sins for our whole lifetime. And we receive his everlasting righteousness. I'm going to say again, when we confess Jesus as Lord, we receive forgiveness of sins for our whole lifetime. And we receive his everlasting righteousness. You remember, under the Mosaic Law, uh, you, could, you laid your hands on your sin offering, which was a sheep some, most of the time. And, and your sins was transferred to that sin offering or that animal, and that animal's innocence was transferred to that individual. I'm now talking about the burnt offering. There was five offerings in the book of Leviticus, and all of those offerings basically was a shadow of Jesus, a type of Jesus, a picture of Jesus, right? So the burnt offering is talking about the righteousness of God, or righteousness of Jesus being transferred to us. We know our sins was transferred to Jesus, but now we receive his righteousness. Because of the Mosaic Law, that animal's innocence was transferred to that individual. So now I'm talking about the burnt offering, those five offerings in the book of Leviticus. Uh, the burnt offering is talking about Jesus' righteousness being transferred to us. That's why the name of this message is the righteousness of God. Now, so... <clears throat> So since we know, so when we confess him as Savior, we receive forgiveness of sins for our whole lifetime, and we receive his everlasting righteousness. So since you are a tripart being, which part of you became righteous when you confessed Jesus as Lord? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. So when the scripture says, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. But which part of us was made the righteousness of God? We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a physical body. So let's explore that. <clears throat> Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And it says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, holy, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Now, so we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a physical body. Some people use spirit and soul interchangeably, meaning they call their spirit their soul and their soul their spirit. But your soul is not your spirit, and your spirit is not your soul. Your soul is made up of three parts. Your will, which is your decision maker. Your emotions, which is feelings on the inside that moves you towards pain or pleasure, right? And also, <clears throat> you have... Your mind, which is your thinker. So you have your mind, which is your thinker. Your will is your decision maker. And your emotions have feelings on the inside that moves you towards pain or pleasure. Now, so your spirit is not your soul and your soul is not your spirit. Now, and, and the question was, which part of you was made righteous when you confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Was it your spirit or your soul or your physical body? Let's move on. Now, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. In the Christian Standard, Standard Bible. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. In the Christian Standard Bible. It says, to the assembly of the firstborn whose names have been written in heaven. To a judge who is God of all. To the spirits of righteous people made perfect. Now we know which part of us who, that was made righteous. Let me read it again. To the assembly of the firstborn whose names have been written in heaven. Our names was hidden in the, uh, is written in the Lamb's book of life. To a judge who is God. He's talking about the white throne judgment when those books are open. To the spirits, to the spirits plural, of righteous people made perfect. So our human spirits was made perfect. Perfect. Our human spirits was made righteous. Now, so we see that our human spirits was made righteous and perfect. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we know uh, that our human spirits was made righteous. 
right? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. Now, this body is your earth suit. If an astronaut goes into space, he's the astronaut is an astronaut wears an astronaut suit. The astronaut is inside of that suit, right? For him to exist in space. Well, for us to ex exist on this earth, this body is our earth suit. So the real us, so to speak, is our human spirits inside of this body. Just like the astronaut is, is inside of that astronaut's suit. So our human spirits was made righteous when we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So when we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive forgiveness of sins for our whole lifetime. He's the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. God saw all the sins of your lifetime, put it in the body of Jesus, right? And Jesus is our sin offering, right? The Lamb of God who took away our sins. But also, I'm talking about the burnt offering now. When we put out, when God put our sins in Jesus' body and he died, but there was an exchange that took place. We received Jesus' righteousness. So just like under the Mosaic law, their sins was transferred to the animal, but that animal's innocence was transferred to that individual. I'm talking about the burnt offering now. There was five offerings in the book of Leviticus, and all of those offerings was a shadow of Jesus, right? A picture of Jesus, a type of Jesus. For 1,500 years, God was telling, teaching them about that exchange that was going to eventually take place when Jesus died on the cross. I'm talking about the burnt offering, which was the righteousness of Jesus, right? That righteousness, and that righteousness under the Mosaic law, the righteousness of the law was temporary. It was conditional. That's why a lot of Christians under them, that supposed to be under the covenant of grace, they start confessing their sins because they believe that their righteousness is temporary. They believe that their relationship or their, their righteousness is conditional. They are thinking they are living under the Mosaic law. For 1,500 years, that's how God dealt with them. He was mad with them when they broke the Mosaic law. And that's why in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, he lists, uh, outlined the curses. When the people broke the Mosaic law, they fell in the realm of the curse. So a lot of Christians still have that law mentality. They think that when they sin, their uh, fellowship is broken, but their relationship is still intact. In order for them to get their relationship back intact, they got to confess their sins. That was under the Mosaic law. That law was conditional, but the covenant of grace is unconditional. Now, turn with me. All right, so this is the question. So since we know that we are a tripart being, the question still remains, which part of us was made righteous by God? And we just read that it says, to the assembly of the firstborn whose name have been written in the heaven, and a judge who is God of all, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect. So we see that our human spirits was made righteous and perfect. Righteousness is in, means right standing with God. Now, the Father God took Jesus, who is the incorruptible word seed, and by his Holy Spirit made our human spirits righteous, just like Jesus. God made our human spirits righteous, just like Jesus, for as he is, so are we in this world. Now, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed, by the word of God which liveth in the body forever. Being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed, by the word of God which liveth in the body forever. Now, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is that incorruptible seed. If I would go to the store and buy a bag of watermelon seeds, there's a possibility that one of those watermelon seeds might be corrupt, right? I might buy a bad seed, but with Jesus, there is Jesus. He's the incorruptible. So when you confess him as Lord and Savior, you, you get his incorruptible nature. You get his unblemished uh, nature, right? So... Born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which living in the body forever. So Jesus is the incorruptible word seed that living in a body forever. The scripture is talking about Jesus and God used Jesus, who is the word seed or he is. He used Jesus, who is the incorruptible word seed. And by the Holy Spirit made us righteous. He made our human spirit righteous and he caused us to be born again. Turn with me to John chapter 1, 
verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 14. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1 says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is the Word of God, and he is the incorruptible, everlasting Word seed, which liveth and abideth forever. So Jesus is the Word of God. And he is the incorruptible, everlasting word seed, which liveth and abideth forever. For as he is, so are we in this world. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. In the Applied Bible, classic edition, it says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. In the Amplified Bible, classic edition, it says, No one born or begotten of God deliberately knowingly and habitually practices sin for God's nature abides in him. God's principle of life, the divine sperm remains permanently with him or within him and he cannot practice sinning because he is born of God and begotten of God. Let me read it again. No one born or begotten of God deliberately, knowingly and habitually practices sin. For God's nature abides in him. God's principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanently within him. And he cannot practice sinning because he is born of God and begotten of God. So God used Jesus, his, incor his incorruptible divine everlasting sperm. Let me say that again. So God used Jesus. We know he's the word of God. He's the, also the incorruptible word of God, right? So God used Jesus, the incorruptible, divine, everlasting, sperma, S-P-E-R-M-A, S-P-E-R-M-A. So God used Jesus, the incorruptible, divine, everlasting, sperma, word, seed, to make our human spirits righteous, just like Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus, the word of God. The incorruptible sperm of seed. God used Jesus, his DNA, to make our human spirit righteous. Jesus is righteous. We are righteous. Jesus is holy. We are holy. Everything Jesus is, that's what we are. Now, God used Jesus' incorruptible, divine, everlasting sperm of word seed to make your human spirit righteous, just like Jesus. We're talking about the righteousness of God. Our human spirit was made righteous. And it's not temporary. It's everlasting righteous. You can't lose your righteousness under the covenant of grace. Most people who confess their sin are saying they are losing their righteousness or their righteousness is conditional, just like under the Mosaic law. I'm here to tell you that your righteousness is everlasting. Now, turn with me to John chapter 3, verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 5, and it says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Let me say it again. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, of thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I submit to you that when Jesus said, born again of water, and of the Holy Spirit, he was talking about being made new spiritually with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. I submit to you that when Jesus said being born again of water and of the Holy Spirit, he was talking about being made new spiritually with the incorruptible sperma seed of God and by the Holy Spirit. Born of water, which is the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. And it says this. That he, Jesus, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So we know when Jesus said, born again of water and of the spirit, this scripture just proves to you that Jesus was referring to the word of God. Jesus was referring to himself. Jesus was referring to his sperma. Jesus was referring to his incorruptible uh, nature. He used his own DNA to make your spirit righteous. 
God used Jesus' DNA. Incorruptible word seed. The unchangeable, incorruptible nature. So now your human spirit don't produce sins. Sin's thoughts come from the outside in. But before you accept Jesus, your human spirit, you had the adamant nature. But now you got Jesus' nature. God used Jesus' DNA to make your human spirit righteous. Now, when Jesus said, born of water and of the spirit, we now know he was referring to himself because he is the incorruptible word of God. So, when Jesus said, born again of water and of the Spirit, he was saying, born again of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Word of God is Jesus. And he is the everlasting, incorruptible, sperma, word seed of God. Let me say that again. And we know that the Word of God is Jesus. And he is the everlasting, incorruptible, sperma, word seed of God. So God used Jesus. Everlasting, incorruptible, sperma, word, seed of God. And he used his Holy Spirit to make our human spirits new. Born again. He made our human spirits new with Jesus' DNA. So we got Jesus' unshakable, un uh, incorruptible nature. We no longer have Adam's nature. So when God said, uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now we know what he's talking about. He made our human spirit righteous and he used the DNA of Jesus. So our righteousness is who we are. We are righteous and we are in right standing with God. So, and because Jesus is righteous, his incorruptible, everlasting sperma word seed is righteous. So God used Jesus' righteousness to make us righteous. So that as he is, now you understand that scripture. For as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus is righteous. So we are righteous. Jesus is holy. So we are holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, here we go. All right, and because Jesus is righteous, his incorruptible, everlasting sperm of word seed is righteous. God is not going to use a bad seed to make us born again. He used his own son, Jesus' DNA. And our human spirit is heaven ready. So if you die physically, your human spirit is going straight to heaven. For as he is, so are we in this world. We have everlasting righteousness. Our human spirit was made righteous with Jesus' DNA. We don't have temporary righteousness, the righteousness according to the law. That righteousness was conditional. When they sinned, they fell into the realm of the curse. And they had to confess their sin because if they didn't confess their sins, they would have been uh, for the wages of sin's death. So they would have died. So God was in his mercy. He instituted the uh, sacrifice system so that they can bring an animal instead. So Jesus, right? So the Holy Spirit came into your human spirit, and God used Jesus' incorruptible, everlasting sperma, sperma, word seed of Jesus. He used Jesus' DNA to make your human spirit just like Jesus. Now, he made you born again, or he made you just like Jesus. God used Jesus' DNA to make your human spirit just like Jesus. I'm going to say it again. God used Jesus' DNA to make your human spirit just like Jesus. For as he is, so are we in this world. Now, so Jesus is righteous. That means we, our human spirits, are righteous. You remember I posed the question, which part of you was made righteous? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body? Well, your human spirit was made righteous. Because God used Jesus' DNA to make you righteous. And your righteousness is everlasting. It's not conditional like under the Mosaic law. I gave you the Greek word koinonia. It means fellowship and relationship. Not like some Christians think. They think that when they sin, they lose their fellowship. But I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost used the same Greek root word, koinonia. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. And Jesus is everlasting life. And that means our human spirits have everlasting righteous life. We are righteous forever. It's not temporary. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. In the Derby Bible translation, it says, verse 30, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who has made to us wisdom from God and righteousness and holiness and redemption. So the Father God made Jesus to be, for us, righteousness. Uh, because Jesus is righteous, our, we have everlasting righteousness, for our human spirit came from Jesus. Jesus is righteous, and he lives forever. And we have everlasting righteousness, and our human spirits are righteous forever. Let me say this to you. We have, we are righteous. So now I want you to understand <laughs> that when God made you righteous, he made your human spirit righteous. He used Jesus' DNA. Now, and our righteousness is everlasting. It's not conditional, and it's not temporary like, the, like it was. So there is such a thing as the righteousness of the law, which was conditional. When they sinned, God got mad at them, right? That's where y'all, most Christians get it from. But you're thinking about the Mosaic law. And they had to confess their sins in order to begin to get back in right standing with God under the Mosaic law. But I'm here to tell you, not under the covenant of grace. Because the law don't exist. The law is not for the righteous. So if there's no law, how can you be charged with sin? You are righteous and your righteousness is everlasting. Now, so the Father God made Jesus to be for us righteousness. So God made, so our righteousness is, is based on Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus is righteous, we are righteous. Jesus is holy. We are holy. Jesus is wisdom. We have wisdom. Jesus is redemption. He redeemed us. Everything Jesus is, we are. And our righteousness is not temporary. So when you sin now, you know your sins can't be charged. I'm not giving you a license to sin. I'm only saying to you that God, under the covenant of grace, right, Jesus ended the law. He fulfilled the law. So he knew once he did that, the police can't give me a ticket for running the stop sign if there's no stop sign. So if there's no law for the righteous, how can you be charged with right, with sin? I need to know. For the law is not right. For the law is not for the righteous. So you're thinking when you sin, you got to confess your sin in order to become righteous again. I'm telling you through the scriptures that you are righteous forever. You got everlasting righteousness. But Jesus, he used Jesus' DNA to make you righteous. So the Father God made Jesus to be for us righteous. Talk, turn with me to John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. The scripture said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm here to tell you, we have everlasting righteousness. I just read it to you. We don't have temporary righteousness like they did under the Mosaic law. The righteousness according to the law. Paul spoke extensively about that. He compared the righteousness of the law compared to the righteousness under the covenant of grace. So our human spirits are righteous. We are righteous forever. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. So praise God. And Psalm chapter 119, verse 142, Psalm 119, verse 142, it says, Thy righteousness is everlasting righteousness. Praise God. Hi, I'm Pastor Brian Hammond, and thank you for watching Grace Revelation on Preach the Word Worldwide Network.